Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From where, but... <laughs> I mean, RNA Music. Yes. Deep in the heart of Texas. It's where we're at right now, believe it or not. Just Your mom and pop guitar shop. Yes. And lesson studio. Yes, I'm mom. She's the mom. I'm yeah, the pop. pop. No, just in case you didn't. In case you were curious. All right, it's time to answer some questions. Yay! Guess what? What? This is our 800th video on YouTube. What? On this channel. Wow. I know. Crazy. That's a lot of camera time. That's a lot of videos. That's yeah. 800 videos. So we're, I guess we're celebrating. I don't know how we're going to celebrate, but. <laughs> Can we have steak for dinner? Sure, why not? That'd be great. Okay, yeah. steak dinners, 800 videos. Shit, too squeaky. It is squeaky. First question. Junior Chopper, what do you think of baritone guitars? Mm -hmm. I just received my Chapman M01 baritone and I'm loving it. Thanks. Well, I've only played a couple of baritones in my time. Uh, my friend truck driver Sean has a PRS SE, hi Sean, <laughs> that he's brought by a few times and I played yeah. on it and it was pretty cool. I really, I really liked it. I've never owned one, but yeah. um, the few times I've played on one, if you like to have you know lower tunings, I think they're great. And if you don't really click with seven strings, I think they're really pretty cool. Right. So yeah, I think they're awesome. I yeah. should get one. You should. Thanks for the question, Junior Jobber. There you go. Next question. Sylvester Otto. Yeah. Uh, let's see. A few years ago, I decided I wanted to get back into playing guitar. There was so much available on the internet and YouTube, but I am unsure what would be the best process. A roadmap, if you will, of what to work on. Uh, on Then next and so on. I love bluesy stuff, southern rock, classic rock, oldies rock, and some hard rock. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. There you go. So like a practice roadmap, I guess. Yeah. Well. That's a great question. I think a lot of people have that question because there's so much out there and really there's so is. much information and there's so mm -hmm. many different things you could do. Yeah. But I think like anything else in life, if you focus on the basics, mm -hmm. the basics never change. So no, no matter what style of music you play, no. uh, there are some core essential things you need to know. And that would be um, as many different chords as you can get comfortable with for your style, you know, so if it's rock and stuff, you're going to need more, you know, different power chords and things and all your major minor chords, maybe some, you know, dominant seven chords, major minor seven chords. So I would get, I would set my routine to where I had a certain amount of time where I'd spend on exploring chords, you know, playing chords in certain keys, mm -hmm. playing those chords in those keys all across the neck in different places. So I would focus on, um, you know, chord voicings. Spend some time on that. <laughs> I and, missed you today. I haven't I know. seen you. Well, I like been, looking at you. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> and today's Saturday, so it's I'm in the middle of vlogs and we yeah. haven't we haven't seen each other since this morning. No. You're super cute, I like you. Hey. Um so I would I would bring my practice into, you know, working on chords. Mm -hmm. And in that chord practice I would like if you're gonna play a song in the key of G, you know, if you got G, C, D, E minor, A minor. B minor, but mostly G, C, D, E minor, and A minor. Right. Playing that, you know, in first position with open chords, playing those chords, progressions all across the neck every different way you could. Yeah. So I would focus on some chord stuff. I would work on my scales, particularly your major minor pentatonic scales mm -hmm. for the styles you listed. Yes. Being able to play all uh, five boxes of your pentatonic scales, just inside and out, backwards and forwards, skipping around them, you want to spend some time drilling your scales because that's a core component of music. They're building blocks, right? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Then I would split some time into actually, you know, I would learn some songs. I mean, some people say don't practice songs if you really want to learn to play guitar, but I, you know, I think... Why not? Yeah, I think you, you know, pick out a song that you really like, and, you know, learn to play it, learn yeah. to play the chord progressions, and if there's yeah. a solo in it, Attack that solo. Now, maybe it's above your ability level, but if you just start one note at a time, mm -hmm. <laughs> one lick at a time, I think learning other people's solos is a great way to bridge the gap of, all right, you've learned all your scale positions. Now it's, what do I do with these? Mm -hmm. I can play my scales, but I can't play any leads. 
Well, I think learning other people's solos will help you connect the dots on how to use your scales. Mm -hmm. So I would I would pick out something you know relatively simple. You know, maybe some ACDC stuff or you know something like that. It's not just crazy. Yeah. Crazy fast technical. Right. Um, So I would have I would work on songs as part of my routine. Yeah. And then I would set aside a little bit of time to just sit down and maybe just experiment. Like take your scales, take your chords, um, do a little bit of theory stuff. Mm -hmm. Study about what is a key and how do these things work? How do scales and chords, how they all connect? You know, I would do a little bit of, you know, basic theory study that can show you how to connect the dots on a lot of things. And then Mm -hmm. I would, if you had a chance, I would also try to spend some time writing. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to write a masterpiece. You don't have to write Stairway to Heaven yeah. or something like that. Just write a little something. Come up with your own chord progression. Write right. a little riff, you know. So I would I would break it up into those little sections as starting out. There's a lot more things you could do. There's all kinds of exercises, picking exercises, right. scale exercises. <clears throat> but their basis are you need to know your chords, you need to know your scales. Mm-hmm. More than just the pentatonics, but start with the pentatonics and all right. positions of your pentatonics. Then go on to your major and minor scales and their modes. But, you know, focus on the basics. There's a lot of music out there that was written that was amazing. That was is really very simple. Basic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the biggest hits in the world are super basic. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. super technical. So right. I would organize my practice schedule. Like have a kind of a written plan. Say, okay, I'm going to work on scales for you know 10 minutes. I'm going to work on chords for 10 minutes. I'm going to work on the song for 10 or 50. It could be whatever, whatever amount of time whatever you have. You want to do. Mm-hmm. Just split it up. And working on it every single day, I think, is really the key to making consistent progress. So hope that answers your question, Silverado. If not, ask some more questions. There you go. Next question, Blaine Ludman. Hi, Blaine. <laughs> How and what part of your back did you injure? Ooh, that's a good question. That was, well, it's my, whatever that lowest disc is. I don't know if it's T6 or, well, I don't know the things, but it's that the very bottom disc vertebrae is uh, compressed. And probably, I forgot what my chiropractor said. There's, uh, sometimes you can get tears actually in the disc mm-hmm. itself and uh, that material will tear and then it heals but it kind of scars over a little bit Mm -hmm. and then you can be doing something really simple like I've done and just bending over to plug in something and that scar tissue can tear Mm -hmm. and that'll do it but it's mostly a very compressed disc yep Um, as far as how it happened I'm not entirely sure it wasn't maybe just one incident but years and years of carrying marching drums and playing a marching band where you have Something really heavy on the front, on your front chest, and it's pulling. So probably that, uh, bad posture, and then um, one of the guys in the drum line, Rodney, jumped on my back one time, and so that was probably I can't remember. It wasn't that he like came up behind you and rode piggyback like some guys just kind of grab hold and you know it was like you were laying. I was laying on a table, so a table about you know this tall, like in the music building. I was laying face down on the table, just kind of like. I don't know why. I was taking a nap or something. Yeah. I was just laying on the table mm-hmm. for some reason, which I don't know why. Really high. Oh, sorry. Kind of straightened up. I should lower my, let me lower my chair. There we there go. go. Okay. So, and like, so Rodney was walking by and he mm-hmm. just hopped up and just sat right on the small of my back. Yeah. He just like hopped on me and sat. I was like, ah! knocked the air out of me and I was like oh gosh and then he jumps off and of course the thing is Rodney was like 6'6 six, six, and like 400 pounds so he's a big old boy from Palestine bass drummer and so I think that might have aggravated it I'm not I, it's yeah. been so long now this is like when I was right, it was probably aggravated up until then and then he yeah, probably did the probably. damage and then it's been aggravated ever since. Yeah, it's been aggravated ever since then. And so that's the trauma that you probably Probably. Have. And then so every, you know, maybe once a year or twice a year, mm-hmm. I'll do something stupid. Yeah. Like try to pick up something too heavy, like a pool table or, you know, do too much. And then I'll be fine. And then a couple of days later, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. And so it's right there, down there. And then I, you know, <laughs> I can't stand up or sit down. So yeah. I have to be really careful when I do... Uh, when I do things as far as picking things up yeah. and even nowadays like you know you squat down and lift with your legs and use proper mm-hmm. you know which he does technique um, but even when I do that I can over I can overdo it and aggravate mm-hmm. it so 
um, yeah, there's a story. Now I probably need to do some more core strengthening exercises. Like when I was doing a lot of push-ups mm -hmm. a couple years ago and I was really starting to build uh, in planks and things, building my core, I, I think I had less, I didn't have Back less issues. aggravation. So yeah. But yeah, it's just a disc issue on mm -hmm. that very bottom disc there. Pretty much. Yeah, that's what happened. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Lamar, Angela, is a dance slash prep team different than a drill team like the Rangerettes, yeah. etc.? cetera? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, dance. Uh, pep team does like basketball games. Dance, well, so does to do the Rangerettes. Okay. Dance pep team is very strictly, strictly um, uh, like mortar, modern dance, like what a like yeah like what a cheerleader would do like a cheer team would do um at halftime or you know at a performance or at, on the um on, at the basketball game or whatever like that it's more like dance dance like you would see at a club choreographed dance that's what a pep squad is they're kind of like cheerleaders a dance team pep team they usually stay in the stands. Um, sometimes they'll dance with a band, but their a drill team is um, more military style. They do stuff like the Rockets is more like, like a drill Rockets. team, um, even though the Rockets do everything. But they do the high kicks, and they're more like a chorus line. Like a chorus line of girls. So the Rangerettes, even though they do know modern ballet, tap, lyrical, um, stuff like that, they, it's, they're known for with uh, military bands and come out and do a performance straight line with um, straight line angled um, performances. High kicks. Um, high kicks, splits, jump splits, like jumping up in the air and landing in the splits, um, a lot of stuff. They, I mean, there is dancing involved, of course, obviously, but... It's mostly like they're known for drill teams are known for their line and they line the up. line and, and they, the high kicks and they and the, and the high kick that's really the only difference is the high kicks isn't it's, it well you know it's you I mean there are more and more dance teams that are trying to adapt and vice versa so um, because you know we're all dancers and we like you know so you think you can dance or stuff like that so it's become so popular now in mainstream media to watch dancers dance, especially um, interpretive dancing and modern dancing, that they are all trying to blend. But originally, um, pep teams usually have pom poms, where drill team um, drill teams don't necessarily have pom poms unless they're doing um, a victory line, like where the football players run through, or um, are in the stands. But um, pep teams usually always have pom poms, um, so. There's little little Subtle variations. Their their outfits. Drill teams usually have uh, cowboy hats, um, a hat preferably sometimes a cowboy hat, sombrero type hat, and um, boots. Where pep team usually has like dance shoes and tights, leotards. spandex leotards. So the outfits are different, but yeah. So some similarities and some yeah. differences. But drill teams can have pep, pep pep teams in them. Like we had a pep squad. But it was our drill team members tried out for the pep squad and then performed at, you know, at basketball games and stuff like that. Pep rallies and stuff. So, yeah, that's the difference. We didn't have those in Canton. We just had cheerleaders. Yeah. Which is weird. It's weird. Most of Dallas, I think, I think there's some schools in Austin that's pretty popular. Mostly pep squads. Houston, they have mostly pep squads, but there are some dance teams because you have the, the basketball team. Um, cheerleaders that have dance teams like the Laker girls, then you have the Mavericks. Um, so you you have some dance teams in those major areas, but Dallas especially drill teams. Almost every school has a drill team in da the Dallas area. East, East Texas, Texas has a lot. Has just a not lot. Canton. Yeah, and I think there might be one other school in East Texas, just one other that I know of that doesn't have a drill team. And some did, and now they don't. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of dance team teachers. Hmm. So, which is a shame. It is. Yeah, you're gonna be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader if you don't take dance. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Adam. There you go. I bet Nagadoches has a drill team. Yes, they do. Dragons, yeah, Dragonettes. I think they're something like that. Yeah. Dragonettes. Yeah, Lufkin has a drill team. Mm -hmm. 
Longview, Tyler, all their schools, um, Robert Ely and um, John Tyler. John Tyler has they have drill teams. Athens. Athens has a drill team. Maybank has a drill team. Yeah. Not Kent. We just have. I don't think Edgewood does. No, I don't think so either. I think Will's Point does. Yeah. Kind of. And Van did, but yeah. I don't know if they do anymore. So. Great question. A As we're saying all these names, and most of you have like, no idea what you're talking about, but. Small yeah. towns around East Texas. Yeah, well, we should put up so a picture towns. of me and my dance, right? Like right here. Oh, I did that last week. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I did. Well, you oh. gotta watch. You gotta come back. You don't watch. She doesn't watch these afterwards. <laughs> I do sometimes. But you read last the comments, time, yeah, but you I don't do. actually watch the video because you lived it. You lived the video. You don't need to Until watch it. Until he's like, Angela, come here, come here, come here. Let me show you what I did here. Like explosions or the typewriter sounds or the you know different sounds. And stuff. I come back and watch them to make sure everything was good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. <laughs> Tim Morley. What's up, y'all? Got hey. myself a cigar box guitar, and before long, I'm going to need some new strings. Does D'Addario carry a line of cigar box strings? Mm. Tuning in low, open G, 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 D, G. Keep the music alive and bluesy. Well, Tim, I looked that up because I didn't know. And no, they don't have a set dedicated just for hmm. uh, cigar box. Yeah. So they, now, of course, they do sell individuals, and kind of what I have come across is people... Well, either buy like an electric gu guitar set that has you know the three strings they want in it, mm -hmm. um, and they'll just kind of piece it together. Okay. Or you could buy if you have a store that ser sells individuals. Yeah. You'd have to go to a store, I guess. Um, you can buy individuals from D'Addario, and usually in a ten packs. Like if I just needed some tens, I can't just order one set of tens from D'Addario. I got to get ten sets of tens, mm -hmm. and ten twelves, and ten fourteens, or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, I can tell you what though, if you decide what string gauges you need. Just let me know, and I can order those individuals for you, and we can put it together, and there then you can go. have all that you need. Yeah. But no, they don't have a set like here's the guitar, yeah. you know, cigar box set. Yeah, or it says um, like ukulele. It says yeah, I mean we have like banjo box. strings and ukulele strings and Mandolin. twelve strings with only the high strings of a twelve string, the Nashville tuning twelve string. You know, yeah. they've got everything. But I think from looking around, and I'm not real big into cigar boxes, but it seems like people use um, different tunings. You're going to need different strings. So I don't know that there's standard for that i mean i guess there is there's only a couple of tunings that people use but mm -hmm. so yeah short answer is no long answer is no we can get you some though no. we'll get you whatever you want <laughs> nara on nara tim so there you go thanks tim there you go next question andrew woods why no typewriter at the end oh you mean of last video yeah i could have swore i put it in there but maybe I did not. I, I think know. I was... It, it was a little bit late coming out. We had such a busy week and I was trying to... We edit. had a busy week this week too. Yeah, our weeks have been crazy lately. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I guess I forgot to put it in there. Probably. Dang it. So, obviously, I didn't watch that one all the way to the end when I was editing it. I don't know. I'll try to put it in this time though. I'm not the only one. There you go. All right. Next question. John Harpole. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Question for next week. Getting back to playing guitar daily and wondering what is the best daily practice routine. <laughs> Thanks for an awesome guitar. So excited to play it every day. Thank Yay. you, John. John actually bought uh, our CMG custom RNA limited edition. Woohoo! Uh, Ashley guitar. Mm -hmm. He got number one of five. And so next. Smitty Werber Yeager Ben Jensen. <laughs> he was number one. Yes. <laughs> He got number one, and so uh, before long, uh, we'll get number two in, and number two of five will be available, but John got number one. Number two. Well, John, I did not really know this as I was reading the questions, but apparently, I think if you go back to Junior Chopper's answer from the beginning, I would say I would just repeat the same thing. Yep. Break down, break your time into, uh, you know, if you're going to practice for 30 minutes, you know, you mm -hmm. could do 10, 10, and 10. You know, if you're going to practice an hour, an hour works out pretty good. No, and, it was Sylvester Otto. Oh, Sylvester Otto. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sylvester Otto's question. I kind of answered it. Mm -hmm. Like an hour, I think, would be a good... If, if you're, um, you know, you're wanting to make a lot of progress, mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day will give you some good progress. An hour a day will give you twice as much progress. So Makes sense. And an hour is kind of nice because you can break it up into 15, four 15-minute blocks. Yeah. So I would break my practice time into blocks like that, 15, 15, 15, 15, 
And then, I mean, you can play as much as you want after that. So, you know, but focus practice working on things you're not good at for at least an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you can spend the rest of the day, if you have the time or another hour, just goofing off, playing songs or whatever. But I would, there's a difference between playing guitar and practicing guitar. Practicing That's is working true. on stuff you suck at. And it's not always fun. Suck it. Suck it. Because, you know, it's like, you kind of feel bad. You're like, I'm not very good at this. I just, you know. Right? But that's practice. Practice is getting better at something you're not very good at over time. Playing is like stuff you can already do. and You just sit down and you just it's fun. And playing never gets frustrating. Mm -hmm. Practicing can get frustrating. But I would just focus my time and split it up and set a little timer. Timer is your friend. Because before you know it, 15 my minutes friend. is gone. You're like, okay, great. Yes. <laughs> no more scales today because I'm kind of mad at them. Let's check out some chords and you know, do some chord <laughs> stuff. So That's what I would do, John. <laughs> I'm kind of mad at them kind of mad at this metronome i'm only going to use the metronome for 15 minutes and then it's gone you, for brother. the day i hear you yes so thanks for the question john enjoy that yeah. guitar i kind of I kind of miss it yeah, i can't I wait know. to see number two number two number two <laughs> all right final question metalhead hippie first yuck yuck ryan can you do something with a baritone i'm thinking of getting a prs 277 baritone yeah that was crazy the two baritone, baritone questions, questions. Yeah. i haven't had a baritone question in forever and then we get two baritone questions in one it's for two video. Minutes. We so. need a baritone, apparently. I guess so. Um, now, can I do anything with one? I mean, do you like I mean, like play one? <laughs> yes, I can play. I mean, because I've played Sean's and I really dug it. But um, as far as yeah. selling them, though, um, none of the companies that I carry actually make baritones at the moment. So mm -hmm. we carry Washburn guitars and... I don't think they have a baritone. Mm -hmm. My go-to was going to be Schecter because Schecter has, makes all kinds of guitars. They're kind of known as a metal guitar company. Yeah. And they've got six, seven, eight, nine string guitars. So they do the extended range thing. So weird. Yeah. They've got <laughs> nine strings. You know, Schecter actually makes a guitar. I guess it's not really a baritone though because mm -hmm. typically a baritone is just a little bit longer scale than a regular guitar it might be like a 26 and a half inch or maybe a 27 inch scale yeah. they make one i think it's like a 28 or a 30 um and a baritone you usually tune your your six string is tuned down to a b mm -hmm. so it's like the seven string seventh string of a seven string guitar the Schecter one is like the v6 or something it's like a guitar tuned down an octave so it's still tuned the same as a regular guitar e a d g b e it's just an octave lower than a regular guitar, mm -hmm. and but not as low as a bass. So it kind of sits right between a guitar and a bass. So it's not it's not exactly what people think about when they think of baritones. But they don't make a normal tune to be baritone. So hmm. um, I imagine Acacia could build one. I guess if I asked them really really nice and we did a custom order, they could probably build one. Mm -hmm. But you're looking at some some serious cabbage probably for <laughs> a custom USA baritone. Money, money, money. Yeah, so uh, PRS, they seem to do really well with the baritones. They've had several SEs. They had the Mike Mushok uh, baritone, which was really cool. And then I can't remember the one that truck driver Sean had. It wasn't the Mike Mushok. It was a different uh, signature artist. Clint Lowry, maybe. I think it was a Seven Lowry. Dust guy. <laughs> Mike Lowry. <laughs> Mike Lowry. <laughs> baritone <laughs> so i mean and you can pick those up if you can find them used i think prs does does do a good job of those baritones <laughs> so we gotta go home and watch bad boys too now <laughs> <My blab. laughs> but yeah as far as me you we seen uh bad boys <laughs> you haven't seen bad boys too mm. i i don't have access to any right now that i'm gonna know of. diamond doesn't make them um i mean chapman does i guess but we don't apparently we don't carry chapman anymore so Wow. I can't get I can't get you a Chapman baritone. Well, he wants a PRS. Oh, he wants a PRS. Well, that's yeah. that's the one I would go with if I were looking. I'd probably get me a PRS. I know. Just just saying. So, thanks for the question, Metalhead Hippie. Great one. And uh, I think that wraps up our 800th video. <laughs> Explosion. 800 videos. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Weird. Now, I see that on my screen. I don't know if y'all see that on yours because we have some that are private videos or unlisted. So yes. I don't know if those show for up. students. Yeah, we such. have stuff, some videos for students. We got some really old videos that were marketing videos that do not apply anymore. So I didn't delete them. I just yeah. hit them. But, uh, <laughs> but the ones we have uploaded. Yeah, I have actually uploaded. There are 800 videos on the channel. Yeah. So exciting.
That's a lot. Yeah. That's a big number. So. But it is. If I had we known it was to creeping up. We do something for our thousandth. Yeah. yeah. That's only 200 videos away. It really, it, it'll be here before I know it. Consider we do. do we do at least Saturday two a week. Saturday vlog, the Ask RNA, and if you do the Monday with Paul or whatever, if you do videos with Paul. Yeah, I, I'm supposed then, to do one, but I've, I mean, yeah. You know, and an instructional video here and there. And boxing videos and stuff like that. Between all that, we can get to 200 yeah. pretty quick. So let's I, keep track of them. If I was a serious YouTuber, I would be doing daily uploads. Like back in the day, you could just do one a week or two a week, and that's really good. And YouTube yeah. liked it. Pretty much now, to grow significantly growth-wise, yeah. you really they say you should do daily uploads, which yeah. is. But you can do like five-minute videos and yeah. be like fine. I'm just going to prepare for a buttload of filler videos, like three minute videos. Gonna hey guys. Get, we're going to try to, before the, <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. Before the new year, let's try to get 200 videos made before 2018. Challenge that's accepted. October, November. That's. In three months. Three months. 90 days. Yes. That's, that's like two a day. That's plenty. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we'll see. I, I guess we could. People might. Be, there are some channels that you will say. You'll be so sick of us. There are some like, channels like I know there are channels who do daily uploads. They do twice a day, Holy twice God. a day daily uploads. So they're doing like fourteen videos <sighs> a week. But they're like three minute videos though. Some of them are like five minute, yeah. three minute, two minute videos, or they're just coming on and say, hey, check us out next week or yeah. tomorrow night or tonight we're uploading a video. Or they have a really big team. I watch Evan Carmichael. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, go check out Evan Carmichael. He does like motivational entrepreneur business things. And, yeah. But he has a team working for him. Yeah. So he'll come in we and don't have he team. just, he does the talking to the camera and they'll just shoot a whole day of just videos. But he has people who go and then edit and upload and do all the other work. Well, that helps. But you don't have Yeah, that. I don't have that. But you wouldn't have to edit a two-minute two minute video. Then, yeah, two-minute video. five-minute or three-minute, you know. Or that would, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. That's not a lot of time. Maybe we'll try it. Uh, there was a week. five-minute videos. There was a week, uh, a few, a couple weeks ago, I tried to do, like, how many videos can I, could I do daily uploads? Mm -hmm. And I did that for about a week, and it did help our growth a little bit, but. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough schedule to maintain. For me, running a business, teaching 40 students a week, and, you know, family time, mm -hmm. mowing yards, mm -hmm. fixing rangers, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> It'd be tough. I'm no Robert Baker. I don't have the life of ease right. that Robert has. Right. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you. Thank you for all yes. the comments. We read the comments as well. And if you have a question... Typewriter, typewriter, typewriter. Or comment for you next week. I have the last say. I do? Do you want yes. the last say? Yes. Okay. Leave it below and we'll try <laughs> to answer them next week. Thank you guys so much. And ladies, guys, and girls. Yes. For all the questions and kind words. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need the music. We do need the and music. And we need to keep it alive for each other. And for the next generation. And for the next generation. Including of, Data. Including. And Jordy. No. Data had a beard. Yes. If I stroke it thusly. A fine, full, <laughs> dignified beard. That's fine. We keep the music alive for Data. We will. Bye, all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs>